This, I'm told, happens a lot. So knowing I'm not the only one this happened to makes me feel somewhat better. I thought everyone would hear my story and say it was my fault. So let's find out. This happened back in 2014, but honestly feels like it happened yesterday. I got on Tinder and made a profile to see if I could find someone to date, which was honestly a huge mistake for me. No one told me that you can find people that would have an 80% chance of being crazy on there. I was messaged by a guy that had a profile pic of Jess's forehead and eyes, but at the time, nobody was really a photographer, so that wasn't exactly a letdown. He messaged me that he couldn't swipe me away. I thought that was a strange way to start a conversation, but I didn't immediately give up on him. It turned out that he was one of those smooth, nice guys that you get trapped by, and I didn't realize it then. He never used a pickup line, which I'm not even sure is a thing on the internet in the world of online dating. Once we talked for a long time, we met when I went to the store one day. It was pretty much out of the blue, and he just happened to be there. Looking back, I still don't have any reason to believe that it wasn't an accident, and I'm still in the state of mind that he's a total creep. He recognized me, and we spent a long time just talking in the store. We decided to make it official and go out on our first date, since we were forced to do the meeting. It at least was in a public place such as that. Don't get me wrong though, I've never been one of those meant-to-be people. Our first date was the typical movie and dinner date, with a drop-off at the end of the night that went extremely well. He was pretty smooth the whole time, and I just took it as how he naturally was. Later on in the coming weeks, we hung out together quite a bit, and I asked him to go to my family reunion with me. I didn't want to go, but my parents were insisting that I go see the family as to make them think I don't hate them. The truth is, I don't know them well. You can be family and not know someone. I told them that I would go on one condition, that I take my new boyfriend. My argument was at the time that he might have to go to the future ones anyways. They allowed it reluctantly. Once we went though, he was pretty much rude to everyone. That might have been my fault because of my attitude towards it rubbing off on him. I really didn't want to go. He wasn't rude to my parents, but he was especially rude to people who wanted to know who he was with. Putting the reunion aside, months later, I decided I was going to move in with him. I was getting tired of my parents being tyrants and trying to stop me from doing anything. I did everything they asked of me, and still got treated like a prisoner. For the first few days, he was just fine. I stayed around in his house and cleaned it, making myself useful, and I had plans to get a job somewhere a little later. Life was going great until I did find a job. At that time, he just started taking all of my money that I made and putting it into an account that I didn't have a card to. I don't know how it happened because it was slick and fast, but it ended up that way. I would have to ask him for my money, and then he'd complain about me spending too much. His house was pretty empty, and didn't have a lot in it. I was only trying to buy little things that would help liven up the house, and make it not feel like a storage shed. I tried to have friends come over on occasions, and he would run them off after a while. I thought that was kind of shitty of him, but he made it clear that he didn't like any of them for various reasons for each. He told me that if I got around them too much, I would start doing the things that they do that he didn't like. I thought once or twice about starting a fight over that, but I thought about it for so long, my anger subsided and basically turned into depression. I stopped answering their calls and such. Later on, after a little more of this, he started trying to control my schedule. I was to go to work and come home. That was it. If I went off, which was rare, it was only with him and nowhere else. He slipped things in like I was wasting gas and stuff like that. 
I was the one paying for my gas. I worked. He couldn't even tell me how much of my money that he'd mixed in with his own in the separate bank account. He'd just toss it in and not think twice about it. I wanted just anything to do on my own when he wasn't there, since I basically wasn't allowed to leave. So I had my parents get me a game system for my birthday. It was portable, so I wouldn't be taking up the one and only TV he had in his house. I know I keep referring to it as his house because I didn't live there. I was just a person he let stay there and he controlled everything. One night when I got home from work a little later than I was supposed to, he wasn't happy about it and accused me of going off without his knowledge. He didn't accuse me of cheating which was surprising, but it felt like he was. I asked him what happened to the guy I fell in love with. He didn't like that, and he started a fight. So I poked back finally. I told him that he was controlling everything I did, and I didn't appreciate any of it. He just called me ungrateful like he was doing me a service. I told him he had driven away everyone from me, and I didn't have anyone else. He told me, All you need is me. That was the thing he said that snapped me out of my daze, and I woke up panicked. I didn't continue arguing with him. I just walked away as he was still going. I couldn't believe that's how we felt about all this. I gave it some thought for a few hours and started packing up my stuff and I left. I went back to my parents' house and told them this story along with some nasty details I'm leaving out of this one. It took me that long to realize that he was just crazy and he wasn't the one I wanted to spend any more time with. The time I had spent with him was pretty low quality anyways. This wasn't over yet though. Once I moved back in with my parents, and life as usual resumed, he started looking for me. He found me in a public place a few times because he knew where I went. The first time he found me, he pleaded for me to come back, but I told him I was happier not being at his house. Each time I saw him, I'd have to run away from him or he wouldn't stop. The second time, though, he made a huge scene in a public place yelling at me that I wasn't thinking clearly and I needed to come home. I guess he thought he'd made himself look like a hero yelling at me like that, but everyone that had stopped to watch probably didn't think so. He did this a few times in a few weeks, but the last time was pretty horrible. He started yelling at me in a store and ended up slapping the shit out of me. A bunch of bystanders rushed in to restrain him and he was arrested. It was completely unprovoked violence. After his brief stay in jail, he got out and attacked me on social media. He'd taken an old picture of me and spammed it everywhere online that he could with a caption I won't repeat here. Basically, the caption told everyone to stay clear of me because I was dangerous and I'd ruin your life. I never got any feedback from it, but I guess it was a one last attack that he could think up. Since then, he has stayed far away from me and hasn't approached me at all. It's been a few years since then, and I believe it's all over now. But I still feel a little fear about the whole thing, like he's waiting to strike. But maybe that's just my anxiety. I dated a guy from a website you probably heard of, but not for this reason. Craigslist used to have a single section where you could find some gutter hog to sleep with for the night. But it turned out, that's kind of what I was looking for. Hello, fellow degenerate here and I was not looking for a relationship. I met up with a guy whose name was Ben. He was around my age, and even though we had gotten together for a single night, never to see each other again, he made numerous attempts to wow me throughout the evening. I never thought something like this could happen, but he was a totally cool person and tried to get me to go to dinner afterwards. I really didn't want to, but I did anyways not to be rude. I ended up having a great time with him though. I saw him several more times for basically the same thing. 
an evening at a hotel, and then a restaurant afterwards. We started hanging out more, and eventually, he asked me if I enjoyed my time with him. I told him honestly that it had been fun, and I wish it wouldn't end. We ended up dating. Not the best love story in the world, I know. This is more of what really happens. Most of the time, it just happens at parties in high school or college. I hated my home life, so any way out of it was fine with me. Ben had a house all to himself. He told me to move in right away if I wanted to. That's what I did. I got out of my parents' house and went right into his. If you're wondering, yes, this was a huge mistake that I regret to this day. I can't take it back, but I could definitely learn from it, and I have. This would be my last internet date. Don't worry, I'm still alive. When I moved in, this man changed completely. It started with something as harmless as telling me not to touch certain things in the house, but eventually grew into not letting me do really anything at all. He was very possessive of everything. I didn't mind it being a new person in the house and all. He'd built a life in this house, and who was I to change anything? He began setting rules out for me, like letting him know when I left or came home. I was okay with that because he was kind of paranoid that someone was going to come into the house that shouldn't be in there. But he went about this a little poorly. He told me that he didn't have any enemies, and I always thought that he was going overboard with this, but I respected it. In the end, he just wanted to control everything. It wasn't about safety. He also didn't have anyone that came over either. Most days, I'd sit in the living room and just kind of watch TV or play on a crappy computer that wasn't mine. I'd be left alone in the house most times because he'd sit in the back room doing whatever it is he was doing at the time and didn't want to be disturbed. I found that kind of unattractive, but I couldn't exactly leave either. If I disturbed him to tell him I was leaving, he'd get mad and yell at me that I was ruining his work. If I left without telling him, he'd call me nonstop until I answered and he'd lock me out of the house if I got back too late. I didn't know what happened to the really cool guy I fell in love with. He seemed more like an angry dad than a boyfriend. I never wanted to live this way. I just didn't think about leaving just yet. It was either live here, basically alone, never leaving, or go home to my awful parents. They were abusive and horrible people. This was the best alternative for me at the time. So one day I didn't care anymore and I wanted to go out with a friend to her party. I didn't tell Ben because he didn't want to be disturbed and I was gone all day and most of the night. He wasn't spending time with me anyways, so what was the problem? Well, when I came back, he had a problem. He told me I shouldn't be coming in that late and started to beat on me. When he finally got finished throwing a fit, he expected me to lay down in the same bed with him and sleep soundly like nothing ever happened. I'd gone from being in love with him to absolutely afraid of him. I wanted to leave and go anywhere else. That morning when he locked himself in his back room, I did. I took off with the small amount of stuff that I had and went back to my parents' house. They didn't let me back in. My dad was glad that I'd left and made me feel like I was the reason why he was so abusive and mom was no different. So I guess I became homeless at that moment. I called up a friend that I had nearby and had her come get me so I could move in with her. Dad really didn't go over well. I don't mean she didn't let me. She was angry at me that I waited so long to make a decision to move into a safe place. Okay, maybe not my best moment. I understand. So once I moved in with her, Ben came around looking for me. He told me that I'd better get in the car and go back home with him or he was going to burn the house down. We called the police because my friend had him on film yelling that at me from his car. 
The video quality on her dinky little cell phone at the time was really bad, but the audio caught it quite nicely. Ben never came back after that, though. We gave the evidence to the cops, but I think this is what happened. Ben came and made a threat to burn the house down and never followed through on it. Meanwhile, the cops took the recording in for evidence and threw it in the back room because they didn't want to deal with it. Sounds likely to happen that way. I never saw Ben again, and hopefully I don't still. It's been a long time and I've pretty much forgotten what he even looks like. Maybe that's for the best. I found myself a boyfriend later on, and we're still dating, but I don't plan to move in with him anytime soon. Trust me, I've learned not to be stupid anymore like that. The last thing I want is another evil overlord that tells me even when to breathe. After all was said and done, I might have learned my lesson after the first two or three. But I guess I was a glutton for punishment. I'm way more careful now, but still not that great at picking them. The first girl I met, who was absolutely crazy, was after my first actual girlfriend. This was right after high school. My first was a cool girl who I won't say too much about. The reason why we broke up was because nothing was happening. Right after that, I started working at a sub-delivery place. It was an entry-level job, with entry-level people, including me. I worked in the kitchen portion of the place with a girl named Lainey. She was loud and nasty, just the way I liked them. I liked a girl to be able to talk to me like a sailor. That preference had changed for many reasons. Anyways, Lainey and I worked with each other for around three weeks, when I suddenly popped it on her that I wanted to hang out with her outside work. She acted like a total ass, but said yes and told me to meet her down at the bar after work. That's what we did until around 2 a.m. After the bar closed, she went back to my house and hung out for another few hours in the driveway. She told me that she had a boy of her own, which I was alright with. I didn't care that she had a kid. I desired her enough to where that detail didn't matter. I'd soon come to regret that. Lainey and I started dating, and I started hanging out at her house as well. When she would come over to my house, she would always bring her son. I didn't mind at first, but he acted just like her, but worse. He was destructive. I'd go and yell at him from the other room to stop breaking whatever it was he was breaking, and she would tell me not to yell at him. She said it would traumatize him. I thought that was stupid as hell and wondered if she was actually kidding me, but the gotcha moment never came. I told her that she needed to go in there and make him stop, but she made excuses as to why she couldn't. It would teach him the wrong lesson. She didn't want to scold him for small things. You know, bad parenting skills. I figured that I'd try to teach her that wasn't the way to go about it. But in the end, she had someone feeding her this shit that she would listen to over anyone else. So there was a problem with the boy. That wasn't the only one. There was also a huge problem with her. She had anger issues that she didn't quite see a problem with. If something pissed her off at work, she'd come at me with it. If her son pissed her off, she'd take it out on me. I also figured that I was too deep into this relationship to back out, seeing as we worked together and we both left stuff at each other's houses. Dumb reasons, really. But that was the kind of thought process I had then. I didn't really enjoy being around her anymore, because it seemed like she had gotten worse, and was getting worse still. She never hit me or anything, but she was always angry and yelling about something. I was always nervous around her, thinking that she was going to blow at any moment. I was usually right. I was walking on eggshells, thinking it was okay because I didn't want to make her mad. Well, I had to be told. 
Someone from outside looking in with a clear perspective told me that the relationship had already soured and she was not thinking about my happiness. She was only thinking about the next time she would get angry at something and she'd have me to take it out on. I broke it off with her after a few more days. To my surprise, she got angry of course, but it didn't matter at that point. We were done. I guess she only did that to keep up her appearance. I could tell that she was relieved, and so was I. We just didn't work out together. Fast forward through another few girls that I dated. I had decent relationships with them but they all went nowhere because there was really no spark in between us. Some of us are still friends though. Later on I found a girl who had sort of an obsessive personality. At first she was a joy to be around. I started dating her and the first thing that she did was make me watch the entire Harry Potter lineup. I have to say, I hate Harry Potter. It just wasn't for me. I really didn't mind this though because she would cute overload me and make me forget why I didn't want to do something and just do it anyway. She used that a lot on me. Aside from that, we had a pretty good time together. Until she started hanging around with that one girl. Her friend that she met at a convention she went to started filling her head with all kinds of horrible things that I won't get into. But it all came out in her personality. She started trying to manipulate me into being her everyday slave, saying things that would often make me feel less human. She was also encouraged to act like a baby when she didn't get her way. I started to see her in a different light, and her anime obsession was starting to make her regress in age. I decided to go ahead and break up with her before she started wanting me to buy binkies. I really don't want to go over how she took this though. It was a mess. She went around to all my friends and told them lies, thinking she was some sort of anime villain. Only one even came up to me with any concern. She told him that I did some things to her, that I didn't, and I had to defend myself. But nothing really came of that. The real story starts with the next girl though. This one was a complete psychopath, and I didn't see it until it was already too late. I made the mistake of letting her move into my apartment. At this point, I was already pretty broken because of things that were happening in my life. I thought maybe someone would come by and fix me, but I had to learn to fix myself. This is what started it. It all began when she started trying to take over my house. I didn't see what was going on until I was reduced to a small room by myself. And every time I'd try to get her to do something with me, or hang out, she would create a problem and I would be forced back into my small room. Psychological trauma is never a fun thing to go through. I unfortunately now associate her name with some very bad feelings, but I know I shouldn't. I had the plan that if I moved away and didn't give her the option of coming with me, I'd be free of her and she wouldn't be able to hurt me anymore. It wasn't that easy. She tortured me until the day I moved out, and even after that. She apparently did some digging and found out where I moved to. She essentially became my stalker, and would watch my internet presence, my movements around the area, and monitored to a point what I did. There were even a few times where she'd find me out in public and harass me. It didn't matter if people were around. She'd come out of nowhere and do it. This went on for months until I got tired of being scared to go outside my home. I decided to do a completely silent move, wipe my internet presence from existence, and try to start fresh. That's the only thing I could do. I did get rid of her then, but I couldn't talk to anyone or let them know where I'd gone, or she'd potentially have a way of finding me again. It's been a little while since then, and I've since started dating again. I still haven't found the right one, but I'm still searching. I have been healing from all that as well, but like I said, I had to learn to fix myself other than rely on someone else to do it. No one else really can, or should they have to carry another's burden.
Tinder experiences are usually, it either worked out or that the one you met online was crazy. Usually it's something like that and not what I got. Yes, I met someone crazy, I guess, but not in the way that she couldn't be somebody's girlfriend. We might have worked out if she didn't already have a plan, but I'll start from the beginning. I was a lonely dude at home with just myself. I really didn't have any friends, and I spent most of my time on my computer scrolling through Reddit and Facebook. I saw an ad for one of those dating apps called Tinder, and that got me thinking. Maybe I could get a girlfriend. All the thoughts went through my head at that moment, as I scrolled through blankly not paying attention to the posts I saw. I fantasized about spending time with a girl that didn't even exist. I know how sad that sounds, but I'm sure I'm not the only one who has done that. I'm sure there are sadder things that have been done before. I pulled my phone out and downloaded the Tinder app, hesitated several times, and then made a profile. I started talking to a girl named Taki. She messaged me first and I answered. She was cool and said all the right things to pretty much get into my head. I couldn't even tell she had some sort of plan. We did all the typical Tinder stuff. 1. Get off Tinder. 2. Go to text message and exchange photos and stuff. We got to know each other and all that. I was into her, but now that I know what I know, I can't say she was into me back. Maybe there might have been a part of her that felt something. I don't know. Maybe she was completely sociopathic. I invited her over to my house and she accepted. But now that I remember it clearly, she kind of hinted at wanting to come over. Don't worry, I didn't meet her and just invite her right over. There was time in between. I even cleaned the place up before she came over. I was very serious about impressing her. Talkie came over in the afternoon after she said she got off work. She drove up in a fairly expensive car which, in the back of my mind, I thought she might see my shitbox and then turn and run. She didn't. She came right in. I could tell she was nervous coming into a stranger's home though, but she was the one who suggested this. I only had the intention of hanging out with her and probably doing something like a movie maybe. She had straight to the point plans if you know what I mean. I stopped her and told her if she was doing that for me. She didn't have to. She insisted. I won't say what went on that night, but I went along with what she wanted. The next morning, she was gone. I figured that she had to go to work and just didn't say anything, but I didn't think it was anything weird. When I woke up to move around, I couldn't believe what I saw. I'd been looted. She was gone, but so was a lot of my stuff. All the TVs, my computers were all gone. Anything valuable that I had was missing. I hyperventilated, wondering why and how. I threw a huge fit and broke a lot of other things because of sheer rage that I felt towards someone who would infiltrate my home like this and just steal everything I had. There were a lot of irreplaceable things that were taken, and the worst part is yet to come. Taki, if that was even her real name, had completely disappeared. She hadn't taken my phone because I sleep with that in my pocket. I used it to search the entire internet for her, but her Tinder profile was gone, and she didn't seem to exist anywhere else. The internet was a dead end. I remembered her job she talked about. She said she worked at some place downtown that I knew of. I got in my car and blasted down there to see if she was down there. It was a little bar, and I showed some girl that claimed to be the manager her picture, and she said she'd never seen her before. Well, that was all my leads. I went home empty-handed, as I would stay. 
There was nothing else I could do except for make a futile attempt at getting the police to do anything. I called them and made a report, but ultimately I had to start over. Taki had won, and disappeared like she never existed to begin with. My guess is that she had a plan to get rich, scamming dudes all over under fake aliases, and disappearing into the world like she was never there. The other guess is that she was working for someone else into scamming people. Either way, I never did recover my stuff from the incident, and never found her again. She's probably still out there, under a different name each week, seeing who she can steal from and leaving without a trace. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind you?